Uh, Chairman Inhofe, Ranking Member Cardin, distinguished members of the committee, it's a pleasure to be here today. As a third generation real estate investor and developer from Oklahoma, um, you know, we have a pleasure of creating places that foster community and allow folks to live healthy and rewarding lives. Our family's had a long history on Lake Eufaula. Um, we've been there for over 45 years now. Ten years ago, we began a journey of creating a new town on the shores of Lake Eufaula in southeast Oklahoma. We called the place Carlton Landing. And the site we chose was a 1,900-acre site that was on the same cove where I learned to water ski as a boy. The land is connected to 10 miles of shoreline that's either owned or controlled by the Corps of Engineers. It was our desire that Carlton Landing would be seen as a model for good development, the kind of, that conserves our natural assets, that provides a boost to rural economies, and creates great places for people to live, work, create, and play. Before I share a story, I want to say a few words about the Corps staff. Uh, we worked closely with the Corps staff since 2007, and we built a good rapport. To their credit, we found them to be accessible, responsive, capable, and committed. I have great respect for their authority and the critical nature of their mission. Here's our story. In 2008, we put together a master plan for Carlton Landing, which included 3,000 homes, a town center, shops, restaurants, schools, churches, parks, and trails. The vision was to create a complete lakefront community. And since the Corps controlled all access to the lake from the beginning, we understood that our ability to implement that vision would be absolutely dependent on our ability to work with the Corps. We requested a minor zoning change that would allow us to have walking trails to access the lake, just a four-foot wide gravel chip trail. It was suggested that we partner with a conservation group, so we partnered with the Nature Conservancy. And then it was uh, suggested that we might have a smoother track to get approval if we were a public entity. So we went through the process of actually taking our master plan community and incorporating into a public municipality. Over a three-year time frame, through all these steps, the court's response to our rezoning request was professional, it was courteous, but it was always the answer, no. Title 36 specifically empowers the district commander to use discretion in making minor changes to a shoreline management plan. We discovered that due to the fact that the Eufaula EIS had not been updated since 1977, the previous district commander at the Tulsa District Office had made promises to federal environmental agencies that absolutely no changes would be made until a new EIS was completed. But EISs take funding, and Congress had deferred that funding for several sessions. So we were also informed that private money could not be accepted. So the lake was in a zoning gridlock, and the local Corps staff's hands, was, hands were tied. By the summer of 2010, it appeared that our vision for Carlton Landing was dead in the water. In March of 2011, Senator Inhofe met directly with Tulsa District Commander. And within days, we saw a new tone. Forward motion was realized, and the Corps staff was now on a new mission to update the Eufaula EIS. By April of 13, the EIS was completed, a new shoreline management plan was created, and the rezoning action that we needed was, was complete. By 2015, the town of Carleton Landing had completed a long-term lease of 420 acres of federal lands from the Corps. And today, we're working on dozens of projects, still with the Corps office, um, trying to bring that vision to fruition. Ultimately, it took us eight years to obtain Corps permission to install a community boat dock with a gangway attached to our own land. Eight years. Somehow, despite the regulatory roadblock, we were able to start and create a lake town, even though we didn't have lake access. So while it's true that we've had success with the Corps, the journey to get here has been anything but easy. Unfortunately, our success came only after direct, top-down political pressure from the highest levels in Washington. Without a forceful hand of political involvement to unfreeze the process and to create a door of opportunity, I believe that our efforts would continue to bear no fruit. In our case, the staff was well-intended, but their hands were tied by past commitments and regulatory gridlock. It's unclear how many core projects are affected by the same structural barriers that have been established over time. But issues such as a petrified EIS or a frozen shoreline management plan are a deal killer for a private developer. This should not be the case because it limits success only to those with political connections, deep pockets, and the ability to wait through unrealistic timelines. Every private sector developer project, Carleton Landing included, is absolutely dependent upon obtaining assurances of entitlements within a reasonable time frame. In preparation for today's hearing, I've received good feedback from several developers from across the country. Some have had a positive experience with the Corps, but several have had a very troubling experience. Some 
had experiences so difficult that they had to walk away from the deal, resulting in significant financial loss. And I think that's more the norm um, than the exception. I appreciate General Seminite's no-nonsense approach to accomplishing his mission. I believe he's the kind of leader that the Corps needs to turn the ship around and create a culture of action that brings about the desired outcomes. And I also appreciate the legislative work of the Water Resources Development Act. It gives clear direction and it aims at the right targets. In closing, there's a strong market for careful, smart, sustainable development on our nation's lakes, rivers, and waterways. The Corps is in a position to either encourage or to hinder economic growth at the local level. If we're serious about attracting private investment in and around our natural resources in a way that protects our natural assets while also maximizing their value, I believe it's necessary to set the table for developers and create a better process to clearly define the Corps' regulatory landscape in a way that works for the private sector. Thank you.